One thing that a lot of people have asked me to talk about in this vlog is about motivation. Specifically, a lot of people have asked me to speak about how I motivate myself to train. Now, motivation is not something that you just need for sport and performance, like today or tomorrow. You need to be motivated day in, day out for years to get anywhere significant. So motivation is really the critical underpinning for everything else. So it is really a centrally important subject. And when some of you guys ask me about how I motivate myself, I actually struggle to come up with an answer straight away because I, I feel like I don't consciously try to motivate myself ever. I do feel like I'm very, very motivated for climbing. And um, yeah, sometimes I can be almost pathologically motivated for climbing. And I also noticed that if you think of the very accomplished climbers in the UK, like a lot of the people that I've really looked up to uh, for many years, uh, when I started climbing, people like Malcolm Smith, Jerry Moffat, Ben Moon, and then laterally people like James McAfee, Steve McClure, James Pearson, people like that, that don't just do one or two hard routes, they do really many, and they're also able to um, take on some kind of groundbreaking projects that other people have left behind and they're prepared to, to, to try them and have that willingness to fail. You know, they display a level of motivation that just seems to be inexhaustible. They'll just keep turning up day in, day out and keeping on trying the project and keeping on moving forward with their training. Despite any setback that comes their way, they'll just keep plowing on. Um, and it is kind of amazing and inspiring to, to see that. Um, and. That's what I've tried to emulate in my own climbing as much as possible. But the funny thing is, I don't feel like I really have to try. It's one aspect of um, my own climbing that just seems to come really naturally. So where does that come from? Well, I suppose in one sense, motivation is an aspect of personality. And personality is an extremely complex thing. People have many sides to them. But for me, I would say that there's two themes that I can identify in so much as I can be objective about myself um, that I think have given me the ability to be motivated for a long time. And the first is training. And when I say training, I mean training from when I was a really young child, being very heavily influenced by my parents, specifically my mum. <laughs> now, my mum was not involved in sport or anything like that, but um, through lots of things that she did in her life that I observed while I was growing up, uh, what I saw was um, a kind of a fearlessness in the face of any uh, temporary setbacks or failures. She would just keep ploughing on. Now, where she got that from, I'm not sure. Um, I can't really answer that in a nice, succinct way, although I would have some ideas. But whatever happened, that certainly rubbed off on me. I think as I grew up, I just saw that the need to try something again and again before you get a meaningful success it's just totally normal, it's just part of life. And then it's nothing to, um, it doesn't really, shouldn't really require any special extra effort. That just is the effort that it's required. That is just what's involved in going through life. And so I think I really internalized that. And although I was really terrible at climbing or any other sport when I started, you know, the first days when I went to Dumbarton Rock, I literally could not get off the ground on anything. And I just thought, this is normal, this is what I'm expecting, I'm expecting to fail. Um, and the only way that I'm going to get anywhere is if I just try over and over and over again and try and work it out. So, you know, learning, learning technique or learning a sport is more than just trying again, it is like systematic. Um, and I suppose I also got that, of like this, the sense that I need to work things out. So I was very lucky to have that very strong influence and learning uh, from my mum from an early age. But I guess you can, you can get that same sort of influence just by hanging around highly motivated people. Um, their, their intensity tends to rub off on you, I, I think. And so the more time you spend um, in an environment full of motivated people, the better, really. So I think developing that love of battling with things uh, is the first aspect that's been good for me to help me with my climbing. Um, but the second aspect that I think sustains my motivation for all the 25 years that I've been climbing is a totally different thing. One of the really strong memories I have from my first year of climbing was uh, starting to enter a couple of climbing competitions at Glasgow Climbing Centre, which was the first major climbing wall in Scotland, which uh, opened. And I did one or two comps in, 
I did kind of okay on them. I wasn't amazing at them, um, but I was kind of finding my feet with them, and I did I did like them, and I did obviously want to push myself in climbing. So I'd, I'd entered uh, a, a leading competition, I think it was, and I'd spent ten pounds on the entry fee, which really was quite a lot of money for me at that time, and um, you know I was you know, unsure if I actually wanted to spend this valuable £10 on an entry fee for a comp, but I did. And, and I always remember stepping outside of my mum's house uh, to get on the train to go into the climbing centre to climb in this comp. And it was a Saturday morning and it was quite bright and sunny. And this strange thing happened where without really deciding or thinking about it, I just had this really strong urge that it just seemed the right thing to do to get up, walk over the train bridge to the opposite side and I got the train to Dumbarton Rock instead. And I didn't really th like think about it in a rational way, it just seemed totally natural and it just seemed just totally the wrong thing to do to go inside into a closed room to climb when it was such a beautiful day outside. So I think that was one of the first times that I really realised that the core of my motivation for climbing is being outside in the mountains. So right now it's the middle of March, it's just started raining, but I've been very lucky, I've had a good day bouldering, I've actually managed to climb both the things that I came here to climb. But the last four sessions that I've had here, I failed on the things that I've been trying to climb, but I still had a really good day. Now, those days outside are the fuel for my training. There's, there's something about being outside, seeing the light, feeling the cold air, feeling the wind, feeling the real rock, um, and just being outside in these lovely hills, uh, that it, it does something to my motivation that being in a climbing wall never could. I, I am highly motivated for training and, um, and, and climbing and climbing walls, but to me, being outside is a, a catalyst to make that step up to a higher gear and make it really sustainable. So I must admit that over the past couple of weeks, the weather in Scotland has been really, really poor. And there have been a couple of sessions uh, when I've been training at home where I felt like, okay, this is starting to feel like an effort where I'm having to really say, no, I, want, I need to finish this training session. I need to keep going. Um, but when I've had a break in the weather and I've come out and tried these boulder problems, um, I've gone home with just that fire where I just have enjoyed it so much and it's, it's just a spark is reignited in it and that will last for a very, very long time and get me through many training sessions. So it might sound really simple, but it's absolutely true. There's only ever one thing that I need to say to myself to rejuvenate my motivation to train for climbing and that is to say to myself, I'm going outside climbing and when I come out to somewhere like this and spend a day then I know that I'll go home with the fire to keep motivated to keep training hard until the next time I come out and try the next project.